Ukraine war today. Ukrainian forces face fierce fighting ensuing with Russia around Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian forces and Russian fought fierce battles around the eastern Ukrainian town of Avdiivka after Moscow launched one of its biggest military offensives in months. President Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukrainian forces were holding their ground on the third day of battle, but municipal officials said the Russian attacks were relentless. Kiev says Moscow has redirected many soldiers and large amounts of equipment to the Avdiivka area, showing it can hit back over four months into a Ukrainian counteroffensive in the east and south that has encountered stiff Russian resistance. Avdiivka, we are holding our ground, it is Ukrainian courage and unity that will determine how this war will end, Zelensky wrote on the Telegram messaging app. Ukrainian Special Operations Forces said Kyiv's troops had foiled the plans of the crazed enemy, repelled all attacks and held their positions. Vitaly Barabash, head of the city military administration, told Ukrainian television, the enemy does not stop storming, they come from all directions. Avdiivka is home to a big coking plant in the southwest of the Donetsk region and lies just northwest of the Russian-held city of Donetsk. It has become a symbol of resistance, holding out against Russian troops who invaded Ukraine in February 2022, and helping ensure Moscow has been unable to gain full control of the region even though it says it has annexed it. Ukrainian forces have been defending Avdiivka since long before last year's full-scale invasion, holding the line against Russian-backed militants who took control of territory in East Ukraine in 2014 after Russian forces seized Crimea. Just over 1,600 residents out of a pre-war population of 32,000 remain in Avdiivka, but constant shelling rules out an organized evacuation, Barabash said. The attack on Avdiivka is one of the few big offensives Moscow has launched in months as its troops focus on holding back Kiev's counteroffensive, which has made slow progress through vast Russian minefields and heavily fortified trenches. Russia's defense ministry said its forces had inflicted damage on Ukrainian forces in areas including Avdiivka but gave few details. Alexander Stupin, a spokesperson for Ukraine's southern group of forces, said Russia saw Avdiivka as an opportunity to win a significant victory and turn the tide of fighting. Today the capture or encirclement of Avdiivka is probably the most it can achieve at this stage, he said. The Institute for the Study of War (ISW), an American nonprofit research group and think tank, said geolocated footage showed Russia had advanced in some villages southwest and northwest of Avdiivka this week. But encircling Avdiivka was likely to require more forces than Russia has committed to its offensive, it said. Andriy Yermak, the head of the president's office, said Russia's attacks appeared designed to draw Ukrainian soldiers from fighting on other fronts, though he did not mention Avdiivka specifically. Russia has also intensified airstrikes on Danube River ports in the southern Odessa region in recent weeks, attacking Kiev's main route for food exports since Moscow quit a deal allowing shipments via the Black Sea in July. In the latest overnight attacks, a military spokesperson said a grain storage facility had been hit in the Odessa region. She said some grain had been damaged but did not say how much. In other fighting, Ukraine said it had thwarted an attempt overnight by a Russian eight-member saboteur group to cross its northeastern border in the Suma region. The United States said it would give Ukraine a new military aid package worth $200 million as President Volodymyr Zelensky traveled to NATO's headquarters in Belgium to press for more support for his war-ravaged country, ahead of the onset of the cold season. I'm proud that the United States will announce its latest security assistance package for Ukraine, valued at $200 million. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said alongside Zelensky at the opening of a meeting of the U.S.-led Ukraine Defense Contact Group, also known as the Ramstein Format, which consists of some 50 countries that back Kiev in its war against Russia. Austin said the new package will consist of air defense, rocket, 
and artillery ammunition as well as anti-tank systems, among other things, adding that Washington will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Danish Defense Minister Trolls Lund Poulsen told the defense contact group that his country will deliver the first U.S.-made F-16 warplanes to Ukraine in the spring of next year. In August, Zelensky said Denmark had approved sending 19 of the advanced warplanes to Ukraine. Prime Minister Alexander de Cruz said after meeting with Zelensky that Belgium will send F-16s to Ukraine from 2025 and provide their maintenance. Austin announced that the United States will take on a new leadership role in the effort to build Ukraine's Air Force, specifically with F-16 fighter jets. The United States will co-lead a coalition along with Denmark and Netherlands, and will help organize donation of the aircraft, plans to maintain them, and pilot training. Zelensky earlier on October 11th held talks with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg during his first visit at the alliance's headquarters in Belgium since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Zelensky, whose visit also came ahead of a meeting of NATO foreign ministers and a gathering of the NATO-Ukraine Council, said Ukraine needs more weapons to protect civilians, its energy infrastructure, and its food exports. What we are seeing now is that Russian President Vladimir Putin is preparing once again to use winter as a weapon of war, meaning attacking the energy system, the gas infrastructure. We need to prevent that, Stoltenberg said after the meeting. Zelensky also noted the war being waged between Israel and Hamas, saying Ukrainians understand such tragedy. But he pointed to Ukraine's ongoing need for air defense systems and long-range missiles to push Russia out of our land. He said he had received assurances from Washington that military aid to Ukraine will remain constant and uninterrupted. The NATO-Ukraine Council was established at the NATO summit in Vilnius in July and serves as a platform for exchanges during crisis situations and aims to promote deeper cooperation until Ukraine can fulfill conditions for NATO membership. Defense Minister Rustam Yumarov also attended the meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council to present the alliance with a list of Ukraine's priorities. This includes more air defense systems, heavy weapons, and ammunition. He told reporters afterward that Ukraine received half a billion dollars in pledges of aid as a result of the meeting.